Okay, so now what we're going to do is start to basically try and make our nav bar look a little bit more like the nav bar over here. So, oops. so we've got several things that we need to do. And the first of them actually is change the size of the logo. That, that, that's starting to look just a little bit too small. So let me just bump that up to, to what it looks like in the, uh, the mock-up there, 45 pixels. And so you can see that the, the Viking Blogger is still centered on the, on the logo. But also, if you look at our mock-up, again, it's kind of nice that you can, you can see the pixels on the mock-up. It's 70 pixels is the width of our, of our nav bar. So if we set that up and we say nav bar, it's, it's a class, nav bar, height, 70 pixels. So if we go over here, refresh that, well, you can't really see it, but there, there, there's some funny stuff that's going to shake out of that in a second. Uh, and actually, one of the other things that we forgot here is just writing some text for that other button, which, as we saw, should just be V example user. The V just stands for the caret. It's sort of representing the drop down. So now we can actually see that there's some funny stuff going on here with the overlapping of these elements. And so what we're going to do here is we're, we basically need to take these buttons on the right and shift them over onto the right side. So what we're going to do here is grab their container. And this is why we, we wrap things in containers is because we can just take this whole container and then just kind of shuck it up to the up to the right because right now as you can see from the way that things are the um, and this is why it's useful to have these div divider lines the the div that represents the nav element sorry the uh, the logo container it takes up the whole top here and so there's really no room for anything else to squeeze up there so we're gonna have to massage a couple of things to get it to work and why don't I do my inspect element get my developer tools up here so that at the very least you can see as I select these things that it's taking up the whole line and each each one of these nav elements down here too these these buttons are also taking up a whole line so as you as you could probably guess we're going to need to instead of making them full block elements which have a full width that spans the whole width of the browser we need to start we need to kind of cut those down and, and make them a little bit smaller so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take that that whole container on the right the, the nav elements container and we're just going to float it to the right There's, there's, as with most things, there's a lot of different ways that you can do things, but at the very least over here, now we've, now we've, this is one of the ones that we can use. And you can see that it's, now it's floated over to the right, and as with floated elements, it's also no longer, it's, it's no longer a full block level element in the sense that it, it no longer spans the entire width of its parent div, because right now with a floated element, it's sort of, it's almost like an orphan. It, it doesn't really have a parent div, except in this case, it's the, uh, the body tag. And uh, you might have read about some of the rules for, for how do you define what the parent div of a floated element is. We're not going to re really cover that right now. But what we do need to do is remove this, this whole full line width blocking here from, from the nav bar, from the, uh, the logo container. And so the way that we can do that is by setting the logo, logo container itself, logo container itself to a display of inline block. So that way it no longer takes up the whole line. It's, it still has the properties of a block element, but now it's sort of hiding over on the left. And so now we have logo on the left, buttons on the right. So we're getting there, we're getting there. And so some of the other things that we need to do with these buttons is we wanna make sure that they have the right sizing and that, that should be pretty easy. So we'll do nav elements container, just again, to be specific, we'll do button, and we'll say, what do we want? We want the height of the button to be, well, we'll do the font size first. So we'll, we'll set the font size to about 24 pixels. And we'll also set the alignment of the text to the center and the width of the button. So if you look over in our mockup, looks like the width over here is 195, 195 pixels. This saves us the trouble of visually identifying that. Okay, so now we've got some some things. Oh, and uh, one thing I, I do want to do over here is actually add the class button, because I'm I'm for this exercise I'm going to assume that these are both inheriting from the class button, or, or that, that they're both going to be members of the class button. So now they're both the same over here. So that's good. We're starting to get there. But we also want them to display side by side, and so what we can do with that is make the uh, display inline block for them as well. That inline block comes in pretty handy when you're dealing with horizontal things. Okay, so we're we're starting to get closer. Um, so now let's say let's say we specify the height of of each button, and we say that they're going to be 70 pixels. Oh well, okay. So we saw that 
they became 70 pixels high, but, but the text is still up at the top. Okay, well, may, maybe we could try using this whole vertical align thing, right? Let's try that. Let's do the vertical align. Oh, that didn't work. So vertical align is actually a pretty finicky property, and I would probably try and discourage you from using it in general just because it can it can cause all kinds of headaches. And so one, one of, there's another trick that you can use to make sure that things are actually aligned properly, and that's by setting the line height to the height of the parent element. And so in this case, we know that it's 70 pixels. And so now this is actually centered. And as we saw over here on the left, we, we also need to center this whole thing and that we can actually do the same thing over there with our logo container. So we can set the line height to 70 pixels. Oops, 70 pixels, refresh that, and there we go. So now this is starting to look a whole lot more like what we want it to be. And so we can start cleaning up a few different things. For instance, on the nav bar, we know that we, should, we, we also wanna have a border um, it should just be a border bottom, but we'll call it just one pick solid, solid black for now. Just so that now it's clear that there's a, there's a nav bar up there. And we also, that there's some spacing things because as you can see, there's a little bit of padding that needs to come in on the left side and of, of the screen over here for the element, uh, sorry, for the logo. So we'll set that, that's very easy. So we'll go up to logo container. We can just add a little bit of padding. Padding left, we'll call that 10 pixels. All right, so now that's bumped over a little bit. And again, it, these lines are going to disappear, so it's not, it doesn't really matter that, that there's no padding on the right side here because no one's really going to see that. But then over here on these buttons, we still have some additional styling that we need to do. We're going to definitely want to make the create post. We're going to want to make the background blue. We're going to want to bold the text, and then we're going to want to make sure that the text is light, It's that, that the text is white. And so we can, again, add a, a specific um, we can add a specific text on this, or sorry, class onto this, and we can call that a CTA button, which stands for call to action, which means that we want to make sure that it's, it stands out. And so we'll, we can actually make that a general class and just in the sense that we, we aren't going to namespace that underneath the, the nav elements container necessarily, because that might actually be something that, that would, we would consider more of a global style, something that we're, we're planning on reusing multiple times in our, in our CSS code. Again, there's so many different ways to do things. You just kind of have to do it a whole bunch of times and then see what works for you and what seems to make sense. So with our CTA button, why don't we do a font weight? And we could either type bold or we could use the, the hundreds convention. I think I believe 700 is bold. Uh, it just makes more sense. I think it's more, more legible to, to read bold. We'll make the color of the text white and we'll make the background color blue. So that's a pretty that's a pretty crazy blue. We'll stick with the sublime blue, or sorry, the uh, the blue over here. And what's interesting here is in the mockups you can actually see what the hex code is. So, two B seven eight E four. Two B seven eight E four. So now we're actually gonna have the identical blue from the one that they have right there. So that's pretty cool. So now if you look at the way that things are set up, it's starting to feel a lot more like a real nav bar. And I think at this point, we're pretty much done with the nav bar. All right, so what we're gonna do now, actually, why don't, we, why don't we reduce the size of this so that we can start to see some more stuff on the same page. And since we're gonna be working with a little, we're gonna need a little bit more space here, let's just increase the size of that. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just take a quick look at the font. So as you can see, that it's just rendering the default system font for everything on the page here. So it's it's a serif font, which you know because you can see the little little serifs hanging on the bottom and the tops of all the letters. And I believe the font's probably Times New Roman just by default in terms of my browser. But so based on the mockup, it seems like it looks a little bit better. I think we're we're, we're going for more of an informal typography kind of look which was the kind of stuff that we covered back in the design mini course. And so the way that we're going to do that is just using really quickly on the body tag, we're going to use the font family property. And so we'll just pick the most, uh, the most popular font out there, Helvetica, Helvetica, and we'll do sans serif as a fallback. If for some reason there's a browser out there in the world that does not contain Helvetica. So if we refresh that, now we have Helvetica doesn't quite look exactly the same as what we had up here in the mock-up, but we can kind of clean that up a little bit later. All right, so now that we're done with the nav bar, I'd just like to make another quick change here. Um, 
I, I want to, we, we've been aligning everything with inline block, but sometimes inline block can be a problem. Now that we're done with the nav bar, let's do a git, git commit, git status. All right, so we have a whole bunch of stuff that we should add. Probably should have committed just a little bit earlier. Git add everything. The, the demo stuff folder is just something that I'm using to help out, so that's not part of a normal project. So we'll do git add everything, and we'll do another git status just to show you what's up in there. So we have everything in there, and we'll just do a git commit, git commit. And we'll say, uh, well, frankly, it's it's really an initial commit. Should have done should have done earlier commit. And we'll say call that nav bar basic styling. 